Thank y'all. All right, so when I ask you what time it is, I don't care what you're a fan of, okay? You gotta say bear time, okay? We got that, we okay with that? Let's see if y'all can handle this. All right, kids can do it. Let's see if some, a lot of grown-ups can do it. All right, what time is it? Yeah. No, it ain't loud enough. Let's do it again. What time is it? Yeah. Okay, good deal. I appreciate that. I do. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I think this is the fourth time I've, I've been able to speak to you. I appreciate you asking me back. I always ask Brian when he wants me to come back. I'm like, gosh, they've heard me talk. They're going to get bored. You know, I, I'm, I'm pretty dull. Uh, I probably will repeat a lot of things I said before. But first of all, thanks for that one from Mill Methodist Home. Them pork chops were, were slamming pretty good. Um, so we, we thank you for having us. Appreciate the Making Touchdown Club having me. Um, so I said, what do you want me to talk about? He said, well, just tell us where you are. What's going on? And I always kind of, at the end, ask me some questions. I'm not a great speaker. I'm going to talk at you a little bit, tell you kind of what we're up to, what we're about, and then maybe answer some questions for you at the end. So going into year four, and it's been an interesting three and a half years. Uh, we came in, um, started, you know, trying to fix a program, trying to get a program to become a championship program. And uh, we, we weathered a pandemic right out of the gates. Um, we've been one play away the last two years from being a playoff team, literally one play away from a conference championship and being a playoff team. Um, now we're sitting here uh, two and one this fall. Since we've been at Mercer uh, in FCS football, playing our level of football, we're 20 and 10. So we're proud of that record. That's, that's not bad. That's, that's a good start and that's headed where we want to be. In the Southern Conference, they've never had a winning record in the conference until our staff got there. We're 16 and 8 in those three years and getting ready to head into conference play now. Like I said, we're 2 and 1 this season. Uh, we played North Alabama the first game. It was 102 degrees in Montgomery that day. And we were playing on turf. That thing on the field said 125. Hottest I've ever been in a football game in my life. Our kids did a good job. And I think we'll find as the season goes on, that was a quality win. Um, that's a team with a new coach who hadn't had success. Well, the next week they turn out and beat a team early up at UTC at Chattanooga. Um, so I think the further we go, I think we're going to see that was a pretty good quality win. Our defense played great that game. Gave up seven points. We ended up winning 17-7. Um, it was an outstanding win for our program. We went to Ole Miss, got kicked in the gut a little bit. Old Lane, he, he threw it around, kept throwing it around on us. We got to defend it a little better, and we got to score some points. But we had a rough day there, but bounced back last week against Moorhead State. They came to town. We ended up winning 48-22. to 22. It was interesting for a while. We had, I've never seen three targeting penalties, penalties in a single game. Uh, so maybe we're, I hope we're just physical. Uh, but uh, we got to clean up our tackle a little bit. Uh, but we separated there in the fourth quarter, ended up having a big win. So that's kind of where we are right now. If you look at our league, it's kind of crazy. You know, I think over the last five years, there's been five different conference champions. Um, there's a lot of parity in the Southern Conference. It's tough to win week in and week out. We're getting ready to go into, in, into conference play. We are open this week, and we go to play Furman University the following week, who's ranked, I think, sixth in the country right now. We are ranked 20th in the country, so we are in the top 20 um, and excited to, to really get this season going. Um, as I go through this, you know, I want to talk about some keys to success, and I think people – Okay, people are what make it work. You know, we have a great university, a great academic institution, beautiful facilities, a lot of just making a great city, so many positives, but I really think people are what make it go. So I want to recognize, you know, some people. Uh, President Bill Underwood, who wants to win in sports, wants to win in football. You got to have that when you're a football coach. It's no different than high school coach needing a great principal and a great superintendent. So um, we have a great president who wants to win in football. I appreciate all he does for us. Our athletic director, Jim Cole, Another guy that gives us what we need to be successful, wants to win in, in athletics, wants to win in football. So I appreciate those folks. Covering my coaching staff, first of all, I got Benny Houston here with me tonight there in the orange. He's my football operations guy, which means he keeps me straight. He keeps, keeps us on time, makes sure we got a hotel to stay in, make sure we start practice when we need to and all our stuff. So I appreciate all the hard work he does. On my coaching staff, we've not had a single coach leave in the last two years. Um, so that really means a lot to me that people want to be with us. Out of my coaches I'm going to talk about, I had four coaches having opportunities to go do other things. Two got an opportunity at FBS schools to be coordinators. One got an opportunity to be a Division II head coach. Um, another guy got an opportunity to be an FCS coordinator. They've all stayed. And that means a lot to me. It means we have a great culture. Okay, so let me kind of talk about those guys. Joel Taylor, my defensive coordinator, coaches our linebackers. Joel's been with me since uh, he was with me at Lenore Ryan. He came with me. Uh, when I got the job here, and he's done an outstanding job. If you watched our defense play, man, they play hard, they play physical, they play sound. And, and
and Joel's a great leader. I'm an offensive guy. It's, it, it's really critical that I have a great leader on defense, and he is that. David Cole's our associate head coach, our special teams coordinator, and coaches our corners. David's another guy that was with me at Lenore Ryan, so he came down with me when I got the job. Outstanding leader of young men. Uh, Jimmy Long coaches our defensive line, another guy that came with me from Lenore Ryan. Um, if you watch our defensive front play, they get after you pretty good. They, they're not letting people run the ball on them. Uh, Mike Adams coaches our safeties. He was actually at Mercer when I got the job and I uh, was able to retain him. He's a guy I've known for a long time. He does a great job with those guys. And then a guy named Sumner Ellis, who I coached with before, coaches our boundary linebacker, our defensive end over there, and is also our recruiting coordinator. So our defensive staff does an outstanding job with those kids. Offensively, Bob Bodine's my offense coordinator, offensive line coach, who was also with me at Lenore Ryan. He's been all over the place. He's, he's been at Army, he's been at Citadel, he's been at Georgia Southern. Uh, outstanding offensive line coach. Fred Jones coaches our running backs, who was with me at Ryan Hart. I was able to hire him a year and a half ago to join us. He does a great job with those backs. LaDante Harris coaches our receivers. Um, he was at Mercer when I got the job, so I was another guy that I, I elected to retain. I'm really glad I did. He does a good job with those kids. He's got two All-Americans in that movie. If y'all seen us play those kids, number one, number 13, pretty special. Uh, Kevin O'Brien coaches our tight ends, and uh, he does a great job with those kids. We hired him from Tennessee. He had actually played for Coach Mike Bobo at Colorado State. Um, young guy who's really got a bright future, and then a guy named David Salmon who coaches our quarterbacks. Played quarterback at Mars Hill, was a, an assistant when I first got here as a volunteer, and I hired him back. He did such a great job. So that's our staff. Um, my head strength coach, Evan Barr, if you saw him walking here, you, you'd know he was a strength coach. Um, he's about 380 pounds, a straight dude, and uh, he, he ripped my head off in about two seconds. So I try not to make him mad, but they do a great job. We have got to be a developmental program at Mercer. You've got a high academic school. We're going to spend most of our time recruiting high school kids. We're going to take a few transfers here and there, but we're going to build our program on, on, on Georgia high school talent. And uh, we got to develop those guys, and those guys all do an outstanding job leading young men, building them up as football players, building them in the weight room, watching after them academically. So that's kind of our staff. I want to make sure I acknowledge those guys. I promise you this, you know, when it goes well, it's because of them. I promise you. They do an outstanding job. Let me talk about some of our players, okay? And this is another thing that is really important to me. Y'all heard of the transfer portal. Okay, and it's a, it's a crazy, wild, really popular thing to do right now. Out of our top 44 players last year, we have, I mean, it was, there was two kids that went to the portal. One was a punter, so y'all know them guys are squirrely anyway, right? Okay, they lose their minds sometimes. Apologize to any specialists in here, okay? Anybody that kicked in high school or, or punted. Um, and then we had our third tailback, chose to go somewhere because he wanted a little bit, a few more touches. He's down at Fort Valley now, so great kid. But other than that, we didn't lose a single kid. That is very unusual in today's college world. Okay, we just played an Ole Miss team that had, I think, I want to say the number was 45 of them. Um, so we're, we're getting kids in our program, we're developing kids in our program, our kids want to be there, they want to be a part of what we're doing. That just means so much to me that coaches stay, players stay, it's about people, okay? So I think we got a great culture going. Let's talk about some of those kids, okay? Talk about some of our preseason all-conference guys. Y'all seen us play, you've seen Ty James, number 13 wide receiver. He pretty dang good. He had 1,100 yards receiving last year. Okay, so the other night, he just broke uh, the all-time receiving record in Mercer history. And I think it was, what's he, 2,466 career yards. So outstanding football player. Deron Harper is a preseason all-conference guy. He's number one if you've seen us play. He is dynamic. He had a 53-yard punt return for a touchdown uh, the other night. What was it, 337 all-purpose yards in the game. Led the conference last year in all-purpose yards. Uh, had almost 1,000 yards receiving. So those two kids are really special players. Uh, Ty, Ty is from GAC High School. You're gonna hear a lot of Georgia kids, okay? GAC High School and Dev is from Heritage High School in Conyers, all right? John Thomas, an offensive lineman, who's really our anchor, our left tackle, is a Hillgrove uh, High uh, kid up in Cobb County. Um, Israel McGuiza, another offensive lineman, was preseason all-conference. He's an Archer High School kid up in Gwinnett County. Uh, on defense, preseason all-conference guy, Solomon Zaberu, okay, defensive end from Archer High School in Gwinnett County. Really good player. He was our player of a, defense player of the week from the last game. Isaac Dowling, a linebacker from Shiloh High School, Gwinnett County. That's a lot of Gwinnett County kids, isn't it? Um, Savio Frazier is a defensive tackle. He went to Dutchtown High School, just right up the road in Henry County. Ken Stanley is a Ware County product, a linebacker who was preseason all-conference. 
I mean, a guy named Richie Coffey, that's my first, he's from Jacksonville, Florida. So that, that's, that's Georgia. That might as well be Georgia, right? Okay. He plays nickel for us. All right, Lance Wise, okay, is a safety from Hillgrove High School in Cobb County. He's a preseason All-American. And then Miles Redding is a safety that went to Whitfield Academy up in Cobb County. So that's another Cobb County product. So you're hearing a lot of Georgia kids right there, okay? Devron Harper was special teams player of the week this past week in the league. Like I told you, he had the 53-yard punt return. He's on the senior bowl watch list. So is Ty James, the receiver. Um, some outstanding kids. And, uh, and let me talk about the local kids. I don't want, I want everybody to, we're getting local kids in here too. Travion Solomon's a kid uh, from Northeast, played for the great Coach Wiggins over there. Man, I gotta tell you, Coach Wiggins, man, I coached at Furman when he was playing at App State. That dude was good. He was playing safety back there on three national championship teams. He was a dang ball player. If in fact, I may put him in a uniform next weekend and I'll get him oxygen after one series, okay? <laughs> Coach, you ready to go? <laughs> I hear you, man. Then I got Scooter Risper, which is great because my old friend down here, that's his son, Coach, the legendary Coach Spoon Risper over at Westside. He and I played against each other in high school. You're going to hear that. I mean, the coaching fraternity is, is a pretty neat deal. And like I said, we, we, we had a shootout there when he was playing at Upson County and Upson Lee. And I think I got him one time and he got me one time. Great friendship there. I appreciate him and I appreciate him trusting me to have his son in my program. He's doing a great job for us. Um, Braden Smith is a, is a local kid there from Tattnall Square, played for Coach Abernathy there. So I know we had a, some Tattnall Square people here tonight, and he is going to be a good one, okay? He is a fast little dude. Um, Nate Howard's a kid that starts a tackle for us. He's from Mayor Persons High School up there with Coach Nelson, just right up the road there in Forsyth. A uh, young man named Jose Gonzalez plays some guard for us. He played at Warner Robins High School, one of those state championships down there with Coach Westbrook. And then another kid named Tucker Mix, who played for Coach Chastain at Jones County. Coach Chastain and I go way back. He, I was a GA, my first job was a GA at West Georgia, where Coach Spoon played at as well, um, and he was a student assistant. So you, you get these relationships, people that have been in the business. I appreciate what y'all do. I appreciate these high school coaches. Coach, appreciate all y'all do. I mean, it, it's, I grew up the son of a high school coach, okay? My dad coached high school football in Georgia for 35 years, that's all I've ever known. And, uh, the work you do, Coach Hasher, coached my son at Mountain Sales. Um, I appreciate how you treated him, hard on him, but loved him. Those things mean a lot, what these high school coaches do, because uh, it, it's it's a lot. You're teaching classes, you're chasing kids, you're all over the place, and then they expect you to go out there and score 100 points and, sh and shut them out. You know, so, so I appreciate you guys and all you do, and you know you're always welcome at our place, okay? So I wanted to mention those local kids who are doing a great job for us. Like I said, it's about people. Philosophy-wise, and I've probably covered this before, but I think it's worth repeating is who we are. What do I, what is my job? What do I believe my job is? What, how am I measuring success as a college coach? Well, first of all, we gotta graduate our players. We're at a great academic school at Mercer University, okay? They gotta be able to, they, they gotta have good grades to get in, good test scores, and then they gotta challenge the curriculum. They're not just athletes at our place. Man, we gotta put them in study hall. We gotta watch after them with tutors. And we got, just, just so you know, we had, a, I think it was a 3.05 team GPA in the spring at a, at a school like Mercer, okay? So I'm really proud of our young men. We've pretty much had a 3.0 GPA for the most part. And y'all understand in football, especially at a place like Mercer, okay, those kids are doing a, an outstanding job. So we need to graduate everybody that stays with us, graduate every kid, okay? We need to make, every, make sure every student athlete has a great experience. Now, how do I define that? Okay, first of all, there's accountability. You need to be where you're supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to be doing. Me making sure you do that is gonna give you a great experience. You understand exactly what the expectation is, is gonna give you a great experience, okay? So we're gonna hold everybody accountable from the four string kicker to the first string quarterback. Everybody's gonna be held to the same standard, okay? I think when you do that, everybody knows where they stand and the good kids feel comfortable. They know everybody's being held accountable, okay? First, and second of all, everybody's gonna get coached. It's our job to coach the dog out of these kids. Just like y'all get your height, you coach the dog out of every one of them because they deserve that. They deserve for you to love them enough to coach the daggum dog out of them, okay? We're gonna love our kids. I got three sons at home. I will whip their hind in, but I, they know I love them. And we have a high expectation, but they know I'm gonna be there for them. They know I, I care about them, um, but we're gonna do right, okay? So loving kids is holding them accountable, coaching them up, knowing what's going on with them and their families. You know, and, and letting them know you believe in them, okay? That's really critical. I know when somebody believes in me, 
man, I, I can do it when somebody believes in me. Doesn't matter, okay? And when you got young men that you're working with, get them guys to believe in themselves, especially in today's world where they got so many voices in their head and so many distractions, just getting them to believe in themselves, not being afraid of failure, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a hard job. And I appreciate you coaches it, for, for loving those kids, okay? Uh, we want to represent Mercy University with passion in class. Well, what does that mean? We want to do it the right way. We want to be the good guys on campus, okay? When we go around campus, I want, I want us to be serving folks and picking up trash and interacting with other students, knowing who's in the band, knowing who's in these other activities, and creating fans, okay? That's how you represent the university is by intermingling with everybody, uh, building relationships, and doing the right thing. Your name shouldn't come up in judicial over there because you, you did something without integrity in the classroom. It shouldn't come up you know, with campus police. Those are the things that we need to we need to do right and treat people good. So we need to represent the university. And then when we play, we need to play our tails off. That's representing the university. That's what the university deserves, all right? And then we need to build winners. Now, what is a winner, okay? And y'all, the, uh, these, these high school coaches know what I'm talking about, okay? It's a kid that's the very best he can be in every area, okay? Doesn't matter what it is. Classroom, weight room, practice field, game field, relationships, out serving the community, okay? That's what a winner is. I want a kid to not be afraid of failure and to do his best all the time. That's what winners do. So we want to build winners in every area. And lastly, we want to serve, okay? And we do a lot of things in our program to try to serve. In the spring, our team, we go and watch at least one sporting event from every other team that plays in the spring, whether it's women's and men's basketball, uh, beach volleyball, which is very popular with our guys. Um, <laughs> tennis, okay? It's crazy to see 70 football players at a tennis match. Our tennis coach is a pretty cool guy. You know, we were over there, you know, they're raised, they're loud and everything. I guess a tennis match is supposed to be, you know, like this. And uh, I think we got like warned or something by the official. And uh, the tennis coach, uh, <laughs> y'all see this guy, he's got long hair, but he is, he's a different cat, he's a great guy. He came over and was like, you guys need to be quiet. <laughs> we were like, 10-4, we got you. Just kept raising all kinds of you-know-what out there. So it's pretty, you know, going to softball games, going to baseball games. So, so being a part of the university and going and serving by supporting the other teams. I think a lot of times, and you guys remember this now, you football guys, you don't need to be the one walking around campus with your chest poked out. You don't need to be the one that's better than everybody else. You need to be a part of what's going on and serve other people. If you do that, you're going to get blessed. You're gonna build fans, people are gonna look up to you, and all of a sudden you'll look up and every one of them will be at your game. Okay, so just make sure you're being good to folks. So we wanna get out and serve, serve the community. Um, we had campus cleanup day, we had our guys serve in the cafeteria. I mean, it's pretty cool to see a bunch of football players standing behind the, you know, with their big spoon and a hairnet on, and you know, just serving the other students, okay? Just finding ways to, to serve other folks and make it not be about you, make it be about them. You just create fans and you get blessed. So that's what my responsibility as the head football coach at Mercer is to teach those things, to provide those things, to hold people accountable. And I think when you do that, the school board ends up showing up your way a whole bunch, okay? You gotta go out and play good, but if you have attention to detail and you have the right attitude, which is what these things create, you're probably gonna play pretty good football. We talk about these three things, our three pillars of our program, love, compete, believe. Y'all heard, probably heard me say that. If you've been in our building, you've seen those things on the wall. You've seen the scriptures that go with them. You know, John 15, 13 says, greater love is no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. That's an action, okay? Love is a choice, love is an action. It is not a feeling. So you choose to love people, you choose to pour into people, you choose to serve people. And when you invest in people, man, it's sure hard to give up on them. It's sure hard to not believe in them, okay? So we're gonna love each other. And I need coaches on my staff that love kids, okay? That's really important. The second one is compete, okay? First Corinthians 9, 24 says, in a race all the runners run, but only one wins the prize. Run in such a way that you may win. And the most important part of that verse is in such a way. You ain't gonna win every time. If you think sure, better do everything you can with integrity to win. Don't be afraid of failure, okay? So we want our guys to compete. I I, I got a problem. My wife will probably come up here and tell you I'm crazy. Like if my 10, my 11 year old wants to play checkers, I'm gonna beat his eyes in. That's just, you know, he better bring his A game, okay? Because I'm taking all his pieces. But when he beats me, he's gonna know he beat me. Okay, if I play pickup basketball with my 17 year old, let's get to the point where it, 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 he's, you know, he's reaching, reaching that age where I can't just push him around like I used to. But I'll still put him in the wall, okay? 
And he, he better, if he's going to beat me, he's going to beat my best. Okay? So getting our boys to compete all the time because people that know how to compete don't run from problems as adults. They solve problems. Okay? They stay there and when, when, when it goes hard at home, they figure it out. When the light bill comes up, they figure out how to get paid. Okay? They solve problems. They check, you know, they, they, they stand up for what's right. Okay? When they know how to compete. Okay? So... I want kids that go towards that, not away from that, not back down from that. Because if we're going to win a championship, we've got to be somebody good when it really matters. Okay? And the last thing is believe. And Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. So I do think this. The Lord wants to bless us. He just he, he wants to bless us so bad, but he's not going to do it until we're ready. He's not going to do it until we understand what to do with the blessing. So we just got to work hard, do right, treat people good. And at some point, the blessing is going to show up. Okay, we got to keep hanging on to that. Keep doing the right things. Keep being good to folks. Working your tail off. Okay, and the blessing's coming. So love, compete, believe. That's that's kind of our, our deal. Okay. We cover one more thing that we kind of made some of our themes for this fall. Every you know year we try to have another theme or two, and we kind of I, I watch our team in the off season and kind of let's get a flavor of what we want this team to be about. So our theme, two things for this fall for the twenty three team, and hopefully if you come see us play, you'll see these things in action. First of all, is I get to, okay? Not I have to, but I get to. Well, what's the difference? I get to is a mental approach that says I'm blessed, okay? I'm excited to be here, even though some things may be challenging, I get to do it. Even though this may be difficult, look what I'm getting to do compared to maybe what some other situations people are in. I'm healthy, I get to play college football, I get to get a great degree, I got somebody training me and push me, I get to eat in the dining hall and somebody cleans up after me. Okay, and I get to look at some pretty girls on campus. Sign me up. Okay, that's a pretty good deal. Okay, so we get to do these things. Foot, college football, while challenging, I get tired of people saying it's hard and difficult. Okay, it's really not in comparison to a lot of things a lot of people are dealing with. I get to do it. I get to play ball. Okay, so I want us to always think about things that way. And the other thing is, you heard me say this before, it's no fear of failure. I think this is one of the things that paralyzes young people now. Is you're, it, it's, Everybody's so worried about what somebody's going to say about it, okay? And these cell phones are going to kill us all, all right? Get off the dag on social media. Stop worrying about who's liking your stuff, okay? And worry about the people who are invested in you. That's that's what matters. That's who you need. I worry about what my dad thinks about me because he poured into me and I know he loves me. So his opinion matters, okay? Am I making him proud, okay? Stop worrying about all this other stuff. People who are worried about what everybody thinks of them are paralyzed when it comes to those moments where people need you to step up. They're afraid of failure. So what happens to them psychologically? They don't give their best because they want an out. You need to be willing to give your best. And then if you fail, go try again. Okay? Because success only happens after you fail several times. If we can get our young people to understand that and give their best all the time, they're going to eventually be successful. Don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid of what everybody's thinking about you. Do your best and get better, okay? That's our two things. I get to and no fear of failure, okay? So that's what we want to be, and uh, I'm really excited about where we are. So where are we headed? Well, I think we've built a program that has a great foundation now. We have great kids, and it's really about breaking through in a lot of ways. Like I said, the last two years, we've been right on the verge of a playoff berth. Probably should have got in. Okay, but you need to win one more game to make sure you get in. So that's what we've got to do is break through and win eight, nine, ten games and make sure they put us in there. Okay, and that's where we are as a program. So we want to consistently compete for SoCon championships and playoff bids, be the, set the standard in the league, and we want to be the pride of Mercer and the pride of Macon, something everybody can be proud of. Okay, so please come watch us play. You'll enjoy this team. If you haven't seen us play, come out to, come out to Five Star. Um, it's a great atmosphere, all the stuff they do on a Saturday. Raise your hand if you've been to a game on a Saturday. Okay, you got the concerts on Blackfield, you got stuff for family, all kinds of stuff going on. It's a lot of fun to be in uh, Five Star Stadium on a Saturday. So I appreciate you guys. It's great talking to you. Ask me some questions. Love to take any questions you might have. I'll try to answer them as honestly as I can. I try not to bring that up.
That's a great question. We go into, you know, you want to be realistic in those situations, but at the same time, you're trying to go win the game. You never know if you just go play what will happen. We did not play well, and certainly that's magnified by what we were playing against, especially them on offense. They may have one of the best offenses in the country at any level of college football. So the main thing you want to do is find ways to improve, you know, and when you can get the film and watch it after that game, when we do things right, we gave ourselves a chance to be successful against anybody, okay? When you don't do it right, and when you play great players, it gets magnified. And what I'm trying to sell to them is, while you may not play a team that has 11 guys like that on the field at the same time in our league, there's some players like that. So you might be playing two or three of them at a time, and you gotta hold up, you gotta do it right. So a lot of times when you play somebody that you're a lot better than, you could go out there and not do things at a high level, not do things fundamentally sound, and then you still win the game. Well, we gotta learn something, you know? We gotta go out there and play at the very best level we can play at, do the little things right, be fundamentally sound, do what you're supposed to do. And I think that's what that provides. We played, in the last three years, we played Alabama, we played Auburn, and we played Ole Miss, you know? And those games have made us better, um, especially if we can look at it that way. But you're right, it's tough when you, I mean, it was, it was rough that day. The kids played hard the whole game. They didn't play good the whole game, but I appreciate them that they played hard. And it's a great opportunity to be able to go play in front of that size crowd and be able to show that you got a chance to belong out there. So, and some of our guys did, you know. Uh, so, but it's it's tough sometimes, and I'm not sure how many more years that'll go on with the way college football landscape is changing. You know, you're getting all these super conferences, and it's all about some weird. I mean, when you got teams from the West Coast coming to the ACC and all, it, it's I don't know how some of those things are going to end up being in the future. I don't know how many more of those games we'll get to play. Who we playing next year? Alabama. You know, uh, so we got a couple games in the future, but it may change. A lot of landscape of college football, as far as those things go, may change a good bit. Yes, sir. Coach, you mentioned three targeting penalties. That means those three guys first half. Depends on which half. So we had one young man get a targeting penalty in the first half of the game, so he just had to set out the rest of that game so he can play in the next game. If you had him in the second half, you'll have to set out the first half of the next game. And we're gonna learn from that, because there's a couple of games. Two, the two kids that are not gonna be able to play the first half are real young, um, you know, but still, you need all your guys, you know, so. Uh, but we gotta learn to, to, you know, we gotta understand the rules, we gotta understand what a defenseless player is. You can't hit him in the head, neck area with any part of your body when he's a defenseless player, and you certainly can't strike with the top of your helmet. We gotta, you know, we're being aggressive, but we gotta be smart. And that hurt us. It hurt us the other night. Leading up to your first game, was it a distraction for either the players or the coaches when you found out you were going to be on ESPN? I don't think so. I think that's an exciting thing for the guys. Um, and our games are always streamed on ESPN, but obviously that was the that was the sure enough ESPN. Um, so I'm going to be honest with you, it was so hot out there. I don't even they probably forgot it was on ESPN after about five minutes. That is the – it was – who was at the game? Anybody? Coach, yeah, it was it was it was hot. So, but I think it's anytime you get your brand out there on national TV, um, it's exciting for the kids. But I think it, it really helps the university and it creates a lot of just your recruiting and people just recognizing you. It certainly is a positive thing. Yes, sir. Uh, and to your players, recipients of uh, NIL. Nothing major, okay? There's a few local things where kids are getting just a little something here and there. We'll see how that trickles down. I don't know if all this stuff is sustainable, honestly. You know, we're, we've created a system that doesn't make sense to me. NIL, somebody giving you money for your name, image, and likeness means you need to be a good player. Um, and so when I look at NFL, well, who gets the endorsements? The good players. Who signs contracts? You better be a dang dude. And right now we're using NIL at the highest level of college football to attract high school kids. If I'm starting left tackle somewhere and I, they sign some kid who comes in and, he's, and I find out he's making more money than I am, and he, he better pan out. You know, and, and that to me creates division in your locker room. To me, there needs to be some kind of system in place where it's incentive based. And I don't, to me, why, why would you, you need to, kids need to play a year of college football. I'm all for them. If they're out there getting it done, and they've earned it, give them the money. We tell all our guys, we want you to get it. At the same time, when you start attracting, using it to attract high school players, 
what message are we sending and how is that going to create problems in the locker room and is it sustainable because if i'm giving somebody money and i'm a businessman doing that they better pan out okay you got to earn what you get okay so i'm sorry for the high school guys for, for saying that in front of you but i mean that's that's just the way it is man if you're going to be good go be good now that kid that's playing quarterback in Colorado, somebody needs to give him some name, image, and likeness. That joker's bald. And I think they have. Okay? You know what I mean? I mean, that's that's who, that if you're out there getting it done, you're a great kid, that's who you, you want to represent. Right now, we're using it to sign people. Okay? At the highest level. That, that's, a, that's a slippery slope. Told you I'd tell you what I thought. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's thing called cost of attendance, and, and there's some different things that, that provides a little bit. But listen, don't get me wrong now. If you can get paid, okay, for playing great, I'm all for that. I just think we got to be careful about these collectives that they're using that to to endorse someone who hasn't done it yet. That that's where. But like I said, if we get a kid, if somebody wants to come in and give one of our guys something because they're out there and they're going, man, that guy's a great player. People recognize him. Let's have this kid. You know, represent us. Shoot, go for it. Um, I just think we got to be careful about when they haven't played college football. Yeah, I just think it's tough. Great question. I knew there'd be name, image, and likeness. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm telling them to get out of the way because I want y'all to be able to move the chains. If we're going with tempo, I want to be able to snap the ball. Yep. <laughs> I that's the first time I've ever been thanked for that. I appreciate that. Yep. That was awesome. Any other questions? It's great to have folks on campus. We have a beautiful facility. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right, thank you all very much.